Hey, this is Professor Perez. In this video, we are going to take a look at applications of percent. But before we get started, we gotta get out Charlie. He better be ready to go. Hey, Charlie, you ready? Let's get started right there. Applications of percent. We can use the following structure to solve many percentage problems. And here's that structure. A percent of a total is a portion. That's all you have to remember. Now let's translate this word statement into a math statement. A percent of translates into multiplication. Total is the total, is, that's our equals, portion is portion. Now in all these problems, all you have to do is find out which one am I looking for, the percent, the total, or the portion. If you're looking for a percent, you must be given the total and the portion. If you're looking for the portion, you must be given the total and percent. And if you're looking for the total, you must be given the percent and the portion. So let's put this to work. Here we go. Right here, a basketball player successfully makes 82 out of 120 free throws. What is the player's successful free throw percentage? So in this problem, we're trying to find the percent. Now let's bring up our structure. Percent times total is a portion. The percent represents the percent free throws successfully made. The total is the total free throws attempted. And the portion is the successful free throws. We're looking for the percent. So percent will be represented by the variable x times the total free throws was given. The total free throws was 120 equals, now the successful free throws is 82. Now notice, we were looking for the percentage and we were given the total and the portion. Now we have our equation. x times 120 is the same as 120 times x, or 120x, and that equals 82. Now all we have to do is solve for x. We divide both sides by 120. Charlie, what's 82 divided by 120 rounded to the nearest 10 thousandths? 0.6833. Very nice there, Charlie. 0.6833. Now, remember, x represents a percent. So our answer has to be a percent, not a decimal. So we have to convert that decimal to a percent by moving the decimal place two places to the right. And therefore, our final answer is 68.33%. And now we can answer this question. What is the player's successful free throw percentage? Our answer is 68.33%. There you go. Let's do another one. The population of a large city is 60% female. If the total population of the city is 584,855 people, how many females are in this population? So in this case, are we looking for the total, the percent, or the portion? Well, it's asking us how many females are in the total population. So we are looking for the portion. That means we must be given the total and the percent. So let's write down our structured format. Percent times the total is a portion. The percent here is the percent females in the total population. The total is the total population. And the portion that we're looking for is the number of females. So what is our percentage? Our percentage is 60%. Now, in equations, we don't write percentage. We represent percents by either decimals or fractions. In this case, we're going to use the decimal representation of 60%. Remember, to change a percent to a decimal, we move the decimal two places to the left. So we get 0 0.60 for the percent, or 60 hundredths. Times the total population is 584,855. And we are trying to find the number of females, so that quantity is represented by the variable x. And now, to calculate x, we just simply multiply 0.60 times 584,855. Or Charlie's going to do it. What'd you get, Charlie? 350,913. Very nice there. And so that's our answer. 350,913 females of the total population. So how many males were there? Well, all I have to do is subtract the number of females from the total population and the number of males is 233,942 and notice if you 
find the sum of those two values there, you will get 584,855. Oh, what fun, let's do another one. Here we go, Charlie. At a community college, 32% of a graduating class took statistics. If 360 students from this graduating class took statistics, how many students are in this graduating class? Now don't get scared. Are we looking for the percent, the total, or the portion? In this case, we are looking for the total because it says if 360 students from this graduating class took statistics, how many students are in the total graduating class? We are given the portion and we are given the percent. So we can find the total. Here's our structured format, percent times total equals portion. Our percent is the percent of statistic students. The total is the total graduating class and the portion is the number of students taking statistics. So our percent is given is 32%. We write it as a decimal, move the decimal two places to the left, we get 32 hundredths or 0.32 times the graduating class that's what we're trying to find. So that quantity will be represented by the variable x. There's our equal sign. And the portion, the number of statistic students, is 360. Therefore, our equation is 0.32x equals 360. Now, to solve this equation, we divide both sides by 0.32 to get the 1x. And we get x equals, Charlie, what'd you get? 360 divided by 0.32. 1,125. Very nice there, Charlie. So there are 1,125 graduating students. There we go. That answers the question. Okay, let's do one more problem. These are mixture problems. These are common problems that you have to deal with in beginning algebra, which is the next class following this pre-algebra class. All right, don't get scared. Here we go, Charlie. How much alcohol and water is in a 60 milliliter bottle, milliliter, bottle of alcohol solution marked 35% alcohol. This is a mixture problem. Now a mixture is a mixture of an alcohol solution is a mixture that contains part water and part alcohol. In this case, it's 35% alcohol. So there's our mixture there. We have 60 total milliliters of solution and the bottles mark 35% alcohol. That means there's alcohol in water in that bottle. 35% alcohol. Okay, let's go back to our structure. Percent times the total is a portion. The percent here represents the percent alcohol. The total is the total amount of solution, which in this case is 60 milliliters. The portion is the amount of alcohol. Remember, the solution is made up of two things, alcohol and water. Part of it's alcohol and part of its water. That's why alcohol is the portion of the total solution. Now, which of the three quantities are we looking for? The percent, the total, or the portion? Well, the question asks us how much alcohol and water. So we're actually asked for the portions. Our percent alcohol is 0.35%. I'm sorry, is 35%, but we need to convert that percent to a decimal and doing that gives us 0.35 or 35 hundredths, and that's what we put into our equation. Multiply amount of solution, that's a total solution, which is 60, because it's 60 milliliters, and this will calculate the amount of alcohol. X represents that unknown quantity, right? And so our equation is very simple. It's just 0.35 times 60, and that equals X, and here, we are calculating the milliliters of alcohol that's in that solution. So Charlie, what's 0.35 times 60? 21. Very nice, it's 21. So in that bottle, there are 21 milliliters of alcohol. And because there's a total of 60 milliliters in that bottle, and the total is made up of water and alcohol, and there are 21 milliliters of alcohol, there must be 39 milliliters of water, 60 subtract 21, right? And those two quantities have to add up to 60. 21 plus 39 does add up to 60. So there you go. So that takes care of applications of percent. That was a tough one. That's a little view of beginning algebra. Don't get scared. 
Anyway, let's take a break and we'll see you again soon.